two, and as you can see, we're in front of the crypt of the great actress, Marilyn Monroe. And you guys have seen me do lots of videos from this one cemetery talking about Marilyn and her mysterious and untimely death. And as you guys know, I don't believe that it was an accidental suicide, accidental, purposeful suicide at all. So you with Bobby when he heard of Monroe's death? Yes, I believe we picked it up on the radio. How did uh, Bobby react to the news? Well, uh, I, I don't recall any, any specific reaction. Why do you think that so many witnesses in Los Angeles would have told us and told the police that uh, Bobby Kennedy was in Los Angeles that day? I, I just can't speculate on their misinformation or their bad information or their what they think they saw or what they think they knew. But I, I just, there's just no way he could have been in Los Angeles. Let's see, he had a twin. Isn't it odd that two key members of the police department at that time, that is the police chief himself and the chief of detectives, would both have been of the view that Bobby was there if in fact, there was no evidence. I'd like to cross the camera. John Bates claim that Bobby never left his ranch the day of Marilyn Monroe's death is contradicted by one of the most decorated cops in the Beverly Hills Police Department, Lynn Franklin. I approached uh, uh, Olympic Boulevard at about 12, 10 a.m. I spotted a Lincoln Continental doing about 70 miles an hour eastbound on Olympic Boulevard in a 25 mile zone. I threw on a red light siren and finally got the car stopped right here at the curb, uh, which is a mile away. I walked up the car, recognized Peter Lawford, whom I'd known for years, uh, driving. Uh, seated in the back seat was Robert Kennedy, the Attorney General, and there was another man in the front seat with Peter Lawford. I asked uh, uh, Peter why he was driving so fast. He said he was trying to get the Attorney General to the Hilton Hotel to get pick up. Peter, you're two miles beyond the turnoff point for the Hilton Hotel, and at that time, the Attorney General said, you stupid ass, referring to Peter Lawford. So Bobby Kennedy in L.A. that day. You've got a neighbor of Peter Lawford seeing him. You've got a neighbor of Marilyn Rose seeing him. Here's what the mayor of L.A. told 48 hours. Chief Parker told me confidentially that uh, Bobby Kennedy was supposed to be north of Los Angeles, some city, making a speech. But that actually, he said he was seen in the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. Where was Bobby Kennedy, the Attorney General of the United States, on August 4th, 1962? Well, our records show that he was in Los Angeles. from Deborah Gould, but this is different. This is the eyewitness account by the housekeeper who was there. 
Yeah, Fiona Samari contradicted what she initially said in her book uh, later on in her life. I, I certainly, she may have not felt comfortable initially writing in her book. It's become very apparent that the delay of five or six hours after discovering the body and notifying the police enabled Robert Kennedy a chance to get out of Los Angeles. News reports later stated it gave time for any written evidence of the Kennedy's relationships with Marilyn. Marilyn's phone records for July show that she made several calls to Bobby Kennedy's Justice Department. And there was also a link to the president. Consider this. In the bedclothes, they found a scrap of paper with a number written on it. And that number turned out to be a number of the Kennedy White House. Whatever really happened on that night, both Kennedy brothers came perilously close to being exposed. And there's a great deal of evidence that um, the precise circumstances of Marilyn Monroe's death was covered up. They had to have been afraid that a massive scandal would break around the president. It was a, a scandal that would certainly have destroyed this man. Once again, Kennedy's sexual brinkmanship was coming close to destroying him. The final year of the president's life brought the threat of new sex scandals. So we're sitting here on the Maryland bench right here, paying our last respects to our beautiful Marilyn Monroe, the greatest movie star of all time, the biggest movie star, let's say. And uh, it's just so tragic of what happened, and I don't think we'll ever really know. But I'm hoping that if people like myself keep bringing it up, that we'll find out more about this topic. And we don't want to stand in the way of history. We don't want to whitewash history. We want the truth. And by the way, we can handle the truth. I love you, Marilyn. I'll always keep a good thought for you. Cheers.